Hi, my name is Igor Kafetz, and this is the Liz Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting-edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy Liz Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your Liz Building Lifestyle. When I made a decision to interview experts on my podcast, I swore I'd never be like many show hosts who interview anyone with a beating heart and an authority site. I vowed to interview people who are best at what they do, true authorities whose free advice is more valuable than other so-called experts' paid products. I pledged to not waste time on gurus who do not walk their talk. And I know of no one who walks the talk better than Charlie Page. Back in 2001, Charlie was still trying to make money online when he came across Directory of Easings. 18 months later, he's doing so well, he buys the company. Fast forward a decade and a half, Charlie has propelled the brand to an incredible growth. 23,000 customers and growing, Directory of Easings is undoubtedly the number one resource on easing advertising. And today, Charlie's going to teach you some insider secrets about building your list with easings. Charlie, thank you so much for being here and welcome to the coffee shop. Well, thank you, Igor. I'm, I'm, I'm really honored to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the service you provide to the solo ad community and to the online business community. I've watched your progress since the day you started in this business. That's the advantage of being an old guy like me. And I said to myself back in that day, this guy's going to do something. And sure enough, you have. You've done a lot of amazing things. I appreciate you asking me to be here. Well, uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. It it means a lot coming from you, uh, especially since I've done the same thing. Since I stepped into this business, I've seen you. You know, you were up there with the with the best of the best. And uh, the the first time I actually came across your work was through Vic Streisand's 48 hour cash machine, where he actually introduced easing advertising and explained what they were. And he was recommending the director of easing. So, I mean, all these years later, it's funny how uh, how this how things work out. So. Um, we're happy to host you on the show. When I say we, it's me and the audience. And, uh, you know, I'm really, really excited to help our listeners understand, see and understand how easing advertising can help them grow their business. So without further ado, actually, let's go ahead and dive right into it. And perhaps we can start with you sharing with us and explaining what are easings. Well, that's a good question. That's the foundation, actually, of everything that a person needs to know about easing advertising. And easing is an online newsletter that's delivered by email to people who ask to receive it. Most of them are free. The vast majority of them are free, although there are some paid easings. And uh, these easings are newsletters. They're very much like a magazine, but they're electronic and they're delivered by email only to people who subscribe to them. So they're 100% permission-based uh, email. Inside these e-zines, you can buy advertising. You can place your advertising inside their content. And there are different types of ads and there are different prices of ads. But um, I digress. An e-zine is an online newsletter delivered by email to, to subscribers. Interesting. So do, do people have to pay to be a member of the e no, 99% of the e-zines I've ever looked at have are free. There are some paid e-zines out there, but generally speaking, they don't sell advertising because their subscribers are paying to get very, very specific content. For example, in the stock brokerage or the investing world, there are quite a few paid e-zines where people will pay money to receive a daily or a weekly email blast that gives them specific investing advice. That publisher is not going to sell advertising inside that easing because he, he or she is already collecting money from the subscriber. But that is the rarity. The vast majority of easings are free to subscribe. Interesting. I've, I actually used to be a subscriber to this financial newsletter called uh, The Sovereign Investor, The Sovereign Citizen or something like that. It was a $97 a year. Um, uh-huh. And they, they've done a lot of ads, but mostly for their own stuff. I mean, they promoted their own seminars, workshops, books from um, the, the content contributors. So they, they definitely were not selling advertising, but they were constantly putting out promotions. Well, we find that to be true across the board. That's a good observation. Uh, 
I, I can't tell you how many thousands of e-zines I've looked at, sub subscribed to, and read. And generally speaking, subscribers of e-zines don't see you promoting your own product to them as advertising. But they do if you put an ad for Walmart in your e-zine, they're going to probably object to that. So again, a paid e-zines are a tiny, tiny slice of the e-zine world, but generally speaking, they won't sell ads. They might do a joint venture, but they generally won't sell an ad. Interesting, interesting. So we'll get to joint ventures in a minute because I, I feel this is really interesting piece of it. But you know, when you when you talk about easing ads, um, what what kind of what kind of types of ads are there? Well, easings offer many different types of ads. They they offer the solo ad, which you are very very familiar at with, and you're a master of solo ads. So don't need to tell you about what that <laughs> is. Uh, the word solo, by the way, uh, originated many, many years ago uh, to be a, an ad that stands alone, hence the name solo. Um, E-Scenes also provide banner ads, so you can run a top banner across or one down the side or on the bottom. They offer what are called advertorials, where you can put your article in the e that's promoting your product for a fee. They have uh, sponsor ads, which appear at the top, middle, and bottom of the e-zine. And they also have uh, what are called link ads, where you just put a link in an e-zine and you know it's going to be exposed to a particular number of people. So they have many different types of ads than uh, just solos, but solos are incredibly popular because they're so powerful. Yeah, and, and so, I mean... There, there's so many, and from what it sounds like, like you really have to know what you're doing when you're choosing the certain type of an ad and easing. Now, in your experience, what did you find? I'm, I'm sure there's no one size fits all answer here, but I'm just really curious to ask which type of an easing ad did you find to be most effective uh, when marketing your products? Well, the solo ad is by far the most effective. There's no question about it because your message is going out alone. And so you have that person's full attention. There is also a, a lot of value to be had in mentioning your product or advertising your product while a person is consuming content. So I've found that banner ads, when they're well-placed, uh, are very, very effective because they're so inexpensive. I ran a banner ad to 350,000 people a couple of months ago for $70. So what? that was a pretty, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that was a pretty inexpensive placement. I didn't need to get many clicks and opt-ins in order for that to give me a return on investment. Um, there are places where I have placed ads over the years uh, that are called link ads. It's just a link in a, a random link looking link with no copy at all attached to it inside an easing, but because it's going to 600,000 people, and I'm paying a low cost for it, in that case it was $25, then any clicks I got, I was happy. So solo ads are by far the most effective. I would say the next most effective is what's called a top sponsor ad. That's a little, pre, a little ad that previews the content coming into the, it, it sits on top of the content, and people always read top to bottom. And so uh, whether they read right to left or left to right, they read top to bottom, generally speaking. And uh, so at the top is a very powerful position. So I, I like the banner ad, I like the solo ad, and I like the top sponsor ad. Wow, interesting. Um, so we, we spoke about different kinds of um, easing ads, and we mentioned that solo is the most popular. However, you also had a ton of success and keep having success with the banner ad with a top sponsor ad and even with something as simple as just a link inside the content for that particular easy newsletter. Now, what kind of, I guess, because there's so many different types, I guess it's not, not the easiest question in the world, but what kind of budget do we need to, to be able to, you know, get something done with easings? That's a good question. It's, it's a question that I get asked at the directory of easings all the time. And one of the things we do inside the DOE, not to, not to pitch the site, but one of the things we do is we educate people about how to do all of these things we're discussing. So I know it, it sounds complex, but it's actually a very straight path. I, I think if a person has a smaller budget, 
that they might want to focus on sponsor ads and banner ads. If they have a more substantial budget, they definitely want to take a look at the solo ad. I think one of the things that I always advise clients to do, I think this is true and therefore I always advise clients, is that if you have proven ad copy, if you have copy you feel confident in, then easy and solo ads are very, very effective. Um, but if this is the first time you've run an ad, you have a small budget, you have to make that money back when you run your ad, then I would start with a smaller ad, like a banner or a top sponsor or even a classified ad. Many e carry classified ads just like newspapers do. Uh-huh. So I guess if we focus specifically on the most effective type of, of e ad, which is the solo ad, then of course we have to ask the question, what, uh, what, what are some common denominators for all most successful email swipes or controls that you've used over the years? Well, that's a great question. Since I'm a copywriter, I love to write solo ads and have written so many of them. Um, I believe that the most important common denominators are uh, the, a strong headline. You need a, a good, strong headline, and there's just nothing wrong with starting out with a classic headline. You know, everybody laughs when I talk about the headline that says, I don't know if you remember this classic headline or you've read about it. It's from the 50s. I think it said, they laughed when I sat down to play piano. at the piano. Yep. Yes, yep. yes. Okay, I saw that being used not three weeks ago by a huge billion-dollar company. So when people diminish the value of a classic headline because, oh, everybody uses it, the truth is they don't. And you're only talking to the people you're talking to. So use the classic headline as a start, but your headline is the most important. The next thing I would say is that it's important to tell a story if you can in your solo ad. Just to pitch, pitch, pitch is really not effective. So you want to give them a reason why. And I think there are three elements to a great solo ad, gain, logic, and fear. And the first part of the solo ad should be gain. Here's what's in it for you. And then a call to action. And then logic, here's why this makes sense. And then a call to action. And then fear, you need to act soon. This is going to go away. And then a call to action. And then of course, the last element I would say is the PS is very, very important. For some reason unknown to humankind, People read the PS before they read anything else. So put your strong call to action there and always use three links. Last thing I'll say, I know I said the other one was last, but the last thing I'll say is put your call to action high in the ad. In, in human conversation, we have a tendency to wait to tell the punchline. So we build up to the punchline. Can't do that in advertising. You can't bury the lead. So get that call to action up near the top. Wow. And, and, you know, it's interesting how this rule has not changed for so many decades. Um, you know, keeping keeping your most important stuff and, and links and calls to action over like the squeeze page. I still build squeeze pages and I make sure that the opt-in form is above the fold, that people don't have to scroll down to see it, even on mobile phones. And, you know, I've had I've had this argument with my uh, uh, my designer, right? who insisted that things change, that, you know, the rules of engagement change, that people learn to scroll down. But, you know, every single time I run a split test, it doesn't seem to be the case. I've never met a designer yet who has to feed their family on building a list from a squeeze page. <laughs> all, <laughs> all the designers I know get paid to design. And so that's fine. But when, when you know, I've never had a job in my entire life where I've paid a salary to go to work. I've been either a straight commission salesperson or I have been self-employed. So if I didn't go kill it, we didn't eat it that night. And when you have your life on the firing line like that, then you're following the rules that work. All of my squeeze pages, 100% of them are above the fold, all of it. So, you know, it just works. I keep doing it over and over and over again. Yeah, something about it. I mean, uh, anytime I, I build a squeeze page for a client, and as you know, we, we do stuff like that. We actually build squeeze pages for clients when they run ads with us. It's always above the fold. It has to be. It doesn't matter if it's mobile or not. It has to be above the fold because, you know, people just seem to have some trouble with scrolling down. Even if it's just, you know, 30% of your traffic, still there's that's that's a lot. So to kind of go over what you just shared because you shared a lot, 
And I really appreciate you kind of breaking down the formula to a high convergence swipe. Uh, so we got a classic headline. We got a gain, a logic, and fear as far as the sequence in which we make calls to action. We got a minimum of three calls to action. We want to have a PS. Um, is there anything I missed? No, you got it perfectly. That's, awesome. That's the formula I use and have been teaching for many, many years. Does it change from niche to niche? Or is it something specific to maybe make money online, or is that something you use everywhere? No, I use it everywhere because of this. It's based on human psychology. It's not based on a particular niche. Everybody wants to know what's in it for them. That is the human thing, right? And everybody wants to make an emotional purchase and defend it with logic. So we put logic in position number two. And then people need to know that the, the exit sign is on, right? The, their offer is going to go away. You know this as well as I do, or maybe better, that in the last 48 hours of a promotion, sometimes the last four hours of a promotion, that's when a lot of activity happens. It's human nature to think about it, to put it off. And so you've got to inject that fear without being manipulative. And so that formula, because it's based on psychology, works in every niche I've tried it in. And I'll continue using it until it's working. Yeah, and this is so, so true. It doesn't matter what I promote. It doesn't matter when I do it. But every single time, the last day or even the last half a day of a promotion will bring me half as many sales as I've made throughout the entire course of the promotion until that point. It works every time I test it. And I've tested it with durations of 10 days, 30 days, 4 days. It just works every single time. It's human nature. That's the way we are. People want to think about it. And you need to close the sale. And closing the sale is a call to action. Yeah, you know, it's funny how a lot of people when they write emails, and this is something I've noticed over the years, how they tend to drag, you know, they really drag out the copy. They, they keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. It's like, you know, just ask me to click something already. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. And that does go back again to psychology. If you met a person... Um, in the mall, let's say, and you wanted to strike up a conversation and it was a, a person you wanted to get to know to better. So you were going to say, let's go have coffee sometime. You wouldn't start with let's have coffee sometime because in humor, human interactions, that doesn't work. But emails, the opposite in, in email, you've got to make that call to action very near the top and then describe why. So it's what I call a reverse pyramid. If you take a pyramid, turn it on its head, that's kind of how human interactions in face-to-face -face work compared to email interactions. Interesting. Now, I can, you know, I'm really a big fan of psychology, influence, and, and human nature, and we can talk about this stuff for hours. But since our time <laughs> is limited, I want to uh, point your attention, kind of see what you have to say about uh, what you mentioned earlier. You mentioned ads versus joint venture easings. So I'm really curious to hear more about that. Well, I will be concise about this. Ads are very uh, simply a commercial transaction. I come to you, you're a publisher, I buy an ad, I pay a fee, I get all the clicks that that ad creates, and we're done. A joint venture is a situation by which uh, a publisher agrees to mail a certain number of times for a person, and they're going to share profits. And that's just as simple as it is. So, in other words, um, you, you don't you only pay out of your profits. You only pay out of your profits. That's right. Okay. Now, is it possible to to create a joint venture if, for example, we don't own the product? Just an example. Let's just say I'm promoting something like four percent. Vixtrize is four percent, which is you know I'm an affiliate for that opportunity. Is it possible for me to strike a JV um, with a, a newsletter owner? Yes and no. The, the no part I'll cover first and then the yes part, which is what you want to know, I'll cover second. No in the respect that uh, no publisher in their right mind is going to do a joint venture for a free-to-join affiliate program. So if that publisher could just go <laughs> join the affiliate program and promote, you know, why would they share profits with you? Here's how you do it for a, a thing like 4% or any free-to-join thing you have to create a unique bonus package. You create a bonus package that is unique to you and they can only get it through you. And now your offer is primarily join 4%, secondarily get the bonus that's unique to you. 
And that's the work you do in the JV. It's more than just provide a link and, hey, Mr. Publisher, send it out. It's like I've built this package just for your audience. And if you tailor it just to the audience of that easy, which is, let's face it, very easy to do, now you've got a unique selling proposition. Yeah, and it makes more sense for the customer to buy it anyway because they're getting so much more value for the exact same amount of money it would cost them to purchase it separately. That's exactly right. You, you want to have a multiplier of value and you want to make it unique to readers of this easing only. And that's when publishers start to really pay attention because you're delivering value to that person's readers. They're going to look like a hero for doing nothing except promoting the link you give them. Yeah, exactly. And oftentimes I see this kind of, you know, people miss two points about that. First off, you know, if you feel queasy about selling something, then chances are you don't feel that you're selling something that, that's, you know, 10 times the value of, of the money you're charging. Because if you're selling a $97 product, but giving, you know, $1,000 worth of value, you will be selling, I mean, you'd be shouting from, from the rooftops about that product, right? That's exactly right. That Zig Ziglar said years ago, if you really believe in your product, you have a moral obligation to sell as much of it as you can. And yeah. I really believe that's true. Yeah, me too. I think, uh, was that the Selling 101, the little uh, red book that he has? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great book for anyone who's into marketing and selling and in business for themselves because, I mean, fundamentally uh, speaking, uh, too many people get into the business of marketing without first working on their belief system and really selling themselves on the fact that selling is a noble profession, like Zig used to say. It is. That's exactly right. All right. And of course, you know, uh, you know, you mentioned you've had the experience of selling door to door or, you know, being a commission based salesperson. So you probably learned this firsthand. I did. I learned it. I got married when I was 19 and my wife was 17 and I needed to provide an income. And uh, this is a very long time ago. And so I took a commission sales job and thank God my first sales manager would keep me at the office until nine o'clock at night, role playing different objections and scenarios. And I became a pretty good salesman pretty quick and been doing it ever since. If you don't believe in your product, if you don't believe in the process of providing value through selling something, then that's the wrong business to be in. Yeah, or a wrong product, right? I mean, you can- Yes, exactly. Cool. That's exactly right, yeah. So Charlie, I mean, one last question. Uh, so we understand how how easing solo how easing advertising works. We understand different types of easing ads. We understand the difference between an ad and a joint venture. We understand the difference between easing solo ad and a regular solo ad. You know the kind of solo that we you know that's that's popularized by guys like me these days. Now, uh -huh. then my next question, I guess the the next logical question is, why do we need director of easings? Well, that's a very good question. Um, the reason that people need directory of easings is this. Number one, we provide tremendous amounts of support and training. We've been doing this a very long time. The directory of easings started out in 1998, and the person who founded it uh, had a spreadsheet. That's what she was selling. I joined the company later, and then 18 months later, I bought the company from her. When I joined it as a member, um, it was a spreadsheet. That's what I got. Now we have an entire learning center, we have an affiliate center, we have all types of support material, several webinars people can attend. So the reason that people need the directory of e-zines is if they want to succeed with advertising in e-zines, the DOE is the premier resource, and I really can say that with integrity, about teaching people how to succeed with e-zine advertising. We offer tremendous support, and we offer tremendous teaching, and we'll get you to the point where you understand exactly what easy and advertising is and how to do it in a very short period of time. The second reason is we act as a clearinghouse of easy and information. You know, one of our slogans is we do the research so you don't have to. So you could go to Google and you could put in Forex easy, right? Or you could put in weight loss easy. And then you have to determine, do they sell ads? And if so, how do you contact them? And if so, how much do they cost? And if so, how do I submit my ads? And all these many, I could give you 12 different metrics that we, that we report on for each easy. 
We do that work for you. So what you do is log into the DOE. Once you have your training and you're confident, ready to go, you choose the niche you want to be in from the niches that we cover. And now you're presented with a list of e-zines and we clearly state what type of ad they sell, what the cost is, how to contact them. And we support our members. If people need help or they run into any kind of question, we're right there to help. So the reason people need the directory of e-zines in a nutshell is because it saves time and time is money. It saves you money because we have several publishers who give a DOE member only discount. The, uh, the banner ad I talked about going to 300,000 people for $70 that's a $250 banner ad that people get for 70 because they're a member of the DOE. So we save you money, we save you tons of time, and you'll actually succeed with easy advertising because you'll understand the process. And how many things do people join where they don't succeed with it because they just didn't get clear on how it worked? So I, you know, those are the main reasons that I believe joining the DOE right now makes perfect sense. Yeah, and I agree with you. Uh, first off, guys, if you're basically quote unquote sold, okay, on director of easings, you can go to igorsolids.com forward slash DOE and you'll get a, a very special offer specifically designed for you know, friends of Igor Solids and Igor Kafets, okay, that Charlie put together specifically for uh, the, the listeners of this podcast and for the members of my list and for my customers, where you get an incredible bonus package on top of just the directory and everything that comes uh, with it. For example, Charlie has put together 37 emails that you can use. Uh, he wrote 11 articles. He's given you his exact squeeze page and even, okay, a lead magnet that you can use to build your list uh, by first rebranding it for yourself and then using it, you know, to run traffic to it. So he's really put together like a complete package for you to get started with easing advertising if you never done it before. Now. Um, what I would like to mention is this, one of the primary complaints that I get from people regarding why they don't succeed with things is because of support. Like I remember interviewing Lance Sumner, uh, who's today is a very successful internet marketer, but he, you know, a couple years ago when he first started working with me, he was, uh, well, still struggling. You know, he said that he got into this company, I, I really don't recall what it was, it's something to do with travel and MLM. And he said they had so much training in there. They had so much stuff. It was so confusing that he just did not understand what, you know, where to begin, how it works and all that. And he spent about eight months figuring it out, just the members area of that program. And so once he was able to do that and he was able to start getting some, some new recruits, what happened was he lost everybody very, very quickly because they got confused too. And there was nobody they could talk to for help. I mean, there was very kind of just really, really bad teaching is, is what it was, which is something that I really see a lot in our industry. But director of easings is really different in that regard. I mean, it's very organized. There's specific, you know, sections for everything. And everything is structured in a way, the way you wonder about it. It's like, hmm, where do I go to, you know, how do I write my swipe? And then you see a headline that says, okay, here's how to write your swipe in four easy steps or something, you know? So it's very, very easy to learn and very easy to understand everything with the director of easings. All right, cool. So, Charlie, um, any, perhaps any last tips or words uh, for anyone who's thinking of getting started with easing advertising? Well, I would say that the main thing is to get started. Take it a step at a time. You know, match up your product to the easing content. That's the, the best tip I could give you. You know, people who play sports also eat dinner. But to advertise a recipe book in a sports magazine easing, probably not the best choice. So we teach all this inside DOE. Take it a step at a time. It's proven. It's worked for a very long time. And, uh, you know, we'll support you as, as much as we can, as much as you need. It's a process that really works if you work it. It's not a magic pill. It's a process. And, uh, you know, I hope they join. I, I really appreciate you having me here, and I'll take great care of the people you send to me. And uh, I know that you know that easy in advertising works, and we're going to make it work for them. Thank you, Charlie. And, yeah, I, I do know that. And here's, I mean, here's the thing, guys. you got three choices, okay, three choices. A, ignore everything we've, you know, we, we, we shared with you today and just don't use easing advertising at all. Think it's a mistake, but, you know, that's what you decide. Fine. No hard feelings. 
Option number two is to go at easy advertising on your own. I mean, that's, that's a viable option if you're an experienced copywriter, if you've done, you know, other form of advertising before, if you're not afraid of, you know, throwing some money at a wall, see what sticks, by all means do it. But if you're really looking for uh, the best possible way to get started making f the fewest amount of mistakes, you know, really maximizing your ROI on the limited advertising dollars you have in your hand, then I highly recommend you head over to igorsolids.com forward slash DOE and sign up with Rector of Easings. Now, Charlie, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's also a money back guarantee. Absolutely. There's a money back guarantee. We've been doing this for a very long time. Our price is low and uh, we have a 60 day money back guarantee. So they're, they're going to be completely covered. See guys, if you honestly do not feel that you're getting 10 times the value, just reach out to Charlie and you know, just be honest and you'll get your money back. I mean, there's really no risk for you. And trust me when I say this, the amount of money you'll save. Okay. Like it, it may seem like you're spending money, right? Uh, buy another course or buy another membership site, but truth be told, Okay, you're going to invest very little money with DOE, but you're going to save a ton on mistakes and you're going to make so much more by having Charlie and his team help tailor the right, like the promotion to what you're selling. I mean, think about the value of having already a, a list of proven easings for your particular offer. Now, Charlie, I have to ask this question. Um, many of our listeners are members of programs like the 4% that we mentioned, a Digital Altitude, um, mob, um, um, legendary marketer, power lead system, like uh, basically a lot of the programs that are considered to be income opportunities and, and uh, lots of MLM marketers too. So is there, well, I guess, uh, is there a market within the DOE uh, for, for those offers? Oh, absolutely. Our largest area is business opportunities, online business, people wanting to make money online. We have more easings in that category than we do in other categories. And one of the wonderful things about easy advertising is the easy publisher does not care what you're promoting. They don't mind at all. If you're sending your traffic to a squeeze page, as we both know, there are social media outlets that are saying now, no, no, we want you to send your traffic, pay us to send your traffic to content. Well, that's fine if that's what you want to do, but there's no point in letting them dictate to you. So easy publishers are wonderful about just supporting what you want to do and sending traffic directly to a squeeze page, directly to a popular program. And uh, that's one reason I love easy so much. Sweet. So guys, there you have it. You know what easy advertising is. You can either not do it, do it on your own or have Charlie and his team help you, which I highly recommend. This is the option I chose as well. So go ahead and head over to igorsolids.com forward slash D O E to sign up using the special offer for Igor Solowitz, friends and customers only. By the way, guys, this is an affiliate link in case you haven't recognized it yet. I'm definitely getting a commission for you signing up, but that's also why I negotiated a really sweet bonus for you, which is basically a complete package. You get the squeeze page, the lead magnet, the 37 emails written by Charlie, 11 articles you can rebrand, again, written by Charlie. So seriously, crazy value. And it's also backed up by a 60 day money back guarantee, which I believe is unconditional. So all you have to do is just kind of join, take a look around. If you don't like it. You can leave and have your money back. No risk and all the reward in the world. So Charlie, thank you so much uh, for sharing your, your wisdom with us today. I appreciate you being able to take the time and until next time we chat, have a good time. Thank you for listening to the Liz Billing Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one.